Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. So we are now starting a new uh, video series called uh, Evaluation of LLMs and Rags. Okay, so there have been some suggestions and requests from most of my subscribers to create a new series where I should cover the uh, how to evaluate LLMs and you know different Rags approaches. So RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. There are a lot of tools nowadays to evaluate uh, RACs or the LLMs. Uh, uh, that, for example, you know, if you talk about LLMs, there are a lot of frameworks that have been developed, like, for example, Human Eval, MBPP, MMLU. For embeddings, we have MTEB. And there are a lot of others on the Hugging Face platforms. You have uh, ELO rating for, uh, you know, comparing LLMs and based on different benchmarking criteria. Now, we those are all that might be difficult for you to do it for your use case uh, when you're selecting a large language model and when you build a rag system how are you gonna evaluate those uh, rag approaches so how are you going to look at the embeddings level how are you going to look at the character level how are you going to look at the language level etc etc we are going to look at all of those things here in this video series this first video is going to be more theoretical that what are we going to cover in the upcoming videos okay and most of the videos in this series will be completely mathematics based okay so it will be completely but i will explain those uh, in a very intuitive manner because when you want to evaluate these uh, rag approaches you have to go a little old school you have to look at the recall precision etc etc on your chunking strategies how are you going to when you do a semantic search how are you going to look at the contextual meaning behind it through different mechanism like bird score for example and all of all of the other algorithms and the evaluation metrics that we're going to look into this now the tools that we see for example ragas and the rej ai by phoenix or something i forgot uh, then we have gpt score then we have geval those are all most of most of them are qualitative measures they are not most of them are not quantitative measures you have to look at the quantitative uh, evaluation metrics to make sure that you are really doing uh, you know natural language processing or machine learning kind of stuff here it's not only should be how relevant or how faithful or how correct the answer is right uh, just because you have uh, like, like these tools are uh, telling you and you believe that we'll look at different approaches and i will cover that so you can see here on my screen i have something called how to evaluate llms and racks let me uh, write it over here that what we're going to cover in this video series the first is we will categorize this into uh, uh, categories the first is quantitative performance metric quantitative performance metrics and the other is qualitative performance metric so this these are our two high level you know categories and then we will go deeper inside both of it qualitative is you know uh, fairly easy to do with a lot of tools already available but for quantitative you have to understand a bit of mathematics how do you calculate a perplexity score? How do you calculate burstiness? How do you calculate a lot of others, right? Then for that, you need a bit of understanding and I will explain those everything in detail. You don't have to go and search internet after this video series, to be honest. We'll look at everything from human eval, you know, to MT, how to use MT graphs, etc. you know, to evaluate LLMs. And we'll also propose some data sets to evaluate LLMs on regional uh, large language model. If somebody is creating a, a LLMs in uh, Spanish language, then this benchmark will not work, this criteria. Then how can we propose a standard data set? We'll cover all of those things in this video series. And this might help you in some of your research work if you are doing. Now, uh, how to, if you want to build a framework, guys, how they do build the framework, let's understand that. How to build a framework to evaluate a large language model. So I'm just writing, if you look at human eval, for example, which is very uh, 
famous for evaluating uh, LLMs on coding problems, uh, for example. And then we have others as well, MMLU, MEPP, then we have embeddings, MTEB, the embeddings leaderboards, etc. How do they create these uh, framework? I will give you a very high level view that how you can build your own, you know, if you are working in an enterprise or even uh, personally, you know, if you want to do as a research project. The first thing should come in mind is model size and complexity. So model size and complexity is the first thing that you know uh, you should worry about when you want to evaluate LLMs. The second is the uh, quality of training data. You should have enough information about uh, uh, that which what kind of data it has you know seen in the training step. I'll just make this training training data quality and also diversity how diverse your data is because that is very important for bias mitigation uh, the next video is on bias mitigation how how to find out bias and uh, look at the fairness ai and all of those angles in the first uh, the first video of the series after this uh, training data quality and diversity we'll look at some approach that how you can find out biases in llms okay uh, programmatically okay now training data quality and diversity being second or the third can be uh, bias and fairness as I just just mentioned right bias and fairness so our first uh, video of this series after this will be bias and fairness which is the second video of course but the, here we will start our uh, journey in this I don't know n number of videos because this is going to be a long playlist okay. now the fourth I can be a few ethical considerations so let me just write ethical considerations and how do you use responsibly responsible use and that's where we define guardrails and all right to guys to handle this uh, responsible gen ai thingy now the other is if fine tuning possible you know if you are using an llm is there a way you can fine tune that model so fine tuning and transfer learning so fine tuning and transfer learning and the sixth can be how much of explainability is possible you know you, you need a bit of explainability and at least explainability explainability and traceability it's very difficult to explain a large language model and the responses that we are getting but we will try to look at some approaches uh, when we are working with open source model on the attention level etc in the upcoming video the next is robustness how robust and how robust it is and how secure it can be when there are some adversarial attacks now people are looking at different way of doing prompt injections breaking the you know the the uh, llms layers etc etc through adversarial attacks right so how robust it is right so let me just also write it adversarial attacks and the eighth one b how do you is, is this way that we can continuous monitor I don't know I wrote continuous spelling wrong okay uh, continuous continuous monitoring and improvement so these are the things that you need these are the things that you need to build a framework or build a system which is reusable and modular uh, to evaluate large language model you have to uh, and you can it, these are all where you can combine your internal findings and learning so you have you would have worked on multiple projects right how can you uh, use those findings and combine it together with these eight points and make it more comprehensive altogether you know for your uh, organization now what are the evaluation methods that we are going to look at guys so let me just write it here so i'm going to write it i'll give you a glimpse that what are the uh, approaches or what are the method we're going to use you know in this video series of evaluating llms and racks so i will mainly categorize this in four or five different ways the first can be let me just write it here for you okay so here i will just write first few so let's write embeddings based we'll look at embeddings based okay fine now it's going up uh embeddings based and then one can be uh, LLM assisted. 
if you look at ragas etc and right they are all using llm to evaluate llm responses or rax uh, responses at some occasions rax can also be considered but they again use llm to evaluate okay i feel that is a good approach but that might not always uh give you what you were all looking at you know to evaluate llms that might not be the best approach to be honest uh then you have evaluation methods you can also write it over here for example uh, language based where you look at different language based so let me just write language based language based and then we can have to we have word based so word based evaluation methods We'll look at word based and then we'll also look at character based i will not write everything here might might not fit into this but we will do we will we'll do all of this what i'm writing here okay or more than that to be honest okay uh so character based so these are going to be your videos upcoming videos categories or the titles we'll start with language based embeddings based character based word based llm assisted llm assisted will be last there are a hell lot of tutorials on ragas and uh, tools using arij ai and all of those there are a lot of videos available on that but we'll cover fundamentals how does perplexity work what is perplexity how do we calculate bird score how do we calculate mover score etc etc right so let me just write it for you now what are the algorithms now or the uh, the approach or the methods we are going to uh, use within this sub categories okay so for example if i talk about uh, llm assisted so llm assisted you would have uh, of course everybody is now familiar with ragas the problem with ragas is is works only with very limited llms and that's why we have to create different uh, functions to work with our own approach like right, that we can finalize and then we have tools like arij we will we'll use one video on arij one video on ragas and then we have gpt score then we have uh, g g eval so these are the llm assisted these will come the later part of this series maybe in the last videos you know they will be in the last videos okay now we'll look at embeddings based this is very important because you are going to retrieve from vector right the vector store or vector databases where you use a threshold value on a uh, you do a get relevant uh, document with a, a similarity score we'll look at how we can use this methods where i'm going to write here now embeddings can be uh, we can look at bot score so we can look into bird score so let me just make it uh, round bird score being one we can look at mover score so bird score mover score being two this two i will cover in the embedding space i will also cover something called weight w e a t this is for this is based on word embeddings and this is mainly for looking at the biasness biases in uh the responses that we are getting or retrieving how bias a uh, model is so i'm writing this in embeddings because it's based on both embeddings and language so this is an intersection of both embeddings and language i'll just make it connection here so it's in both an intersection of uh, language based and embedding that's why I'm, i've written in that side now in the language based this is very important we want to look at uh, nli score so it's related to natural language so natural language is school we're going to look at natural language then we're going to look at blu rt so it's not the actual bilingual evaluation under study but this is little different than that and then we're going to look at qaqg score as well qaqg score and weight is an intersection so in language based we we'll look at nli blurt qag qa score so we'll start with embeddings and then we move to language based and then we come this side then word based word based is very famous you would all of you would have heard about right something called roge roge is the name of a flower if i am not wrong okay uh, which is used in summarization if i am not wrong so roge is a very famous evaluation metric for uh, looking at this summarization when it comes to natural language so we're going to use roge we're going to use blu bilingual 
uh, bilingual evaluation under study that's what we're going to look at intuit and roj we're going to look at for summary evaluations emphasizing memory etc etc now we're going to also look at wer let me just write it okay now meteor is something that you can also look at uh, i don't know if you uh, if, if you guys heard about meteor uh, it's, we spelled it with m e t e o r so uh, b l u uh, and let me just also write meteor for example here you know this will all be helpful at some extent in the rag approaches we'll see how because when you are using different chain types you know uh, if you are using llama index it has summarization uh, that you just tree based etc etc we have to look at uh, we can use this uh, word based methods there and we can find out you know like because this will help us compare the generated text with the human reference so human reference is nothing but the uh, the context that you have right and generated response something that has been generated by a large language model so these are the word based so on evaluation based we're going to look at bot score mover score v8 in language based analyze score blu qa qz word based meteor uh, roj blu wer and llm assisted i've explained now character based we'll look at a few character based like for example maybe edit distance is something that we're going to look at it and then we'll see later what we can use so this is what i'm going to cover in this video series guys apart from the human eval mt how we can set it up in our uh, gpu machine on colab or somewhere and test it out those is already there i'm not writing it over here but i will explain that how those things works as well but this is what i'm going to cover in this uh, series so uh blah 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 and i'll cover that that what we blu means right it calculates the uh, overlap of n grams between you know the human context and the human reference translations and the generated responses so all of those things we will cover into this uh, uh video series maybe this will be a video series of around 8 to 9 or 10 videos uh, we'll see that yeah so for this first video the intro video i just wanted to cover this because uh, if you are people are now being serious they are being serious they are not enough of implementing rag you know on low code no code tools agents etc now the enterprises are being serious they are going uh, in depth finding out which llms to select how to evaluate these approaches because uh once you, the, once they start putting uh this uh, poc is proof of concepts in production they have to be very careful about these things because of their compliance audits uh, regulations etc etc so now you should start uh, looking at these topics rather than building the same thing uh, by making little bit of changes you know on the rag like you can improve it you can uh cut the hallucinations by one percent but this should be your focus to find out why those things are happening right Dif difficult to look at the explainability part of the llms but we'll try to see as much as is possible so let's start this uh, uh series guys from the next video we'll start with the v8 w e a t award embedding based uh evaluations for looking at the biasness uh so biases in two different uh aspects we will look at the uh the racism uh, we'll we'll look at the racism and then we'll look at the diversity the demographic diversity so these two things we will look at it uh, with some simple examples i'll explain that so for this video i'll end it here because it's an intro video i hope you got the understanding that these are the topics that we're going to cover this is how we're going to evaluate the llms and rags based on these methods and uh, i'll give the snapshot i will i'm also going to create a github repository where i will start putting these materials and collaterals over there so if you have any question thoughts or feedbacks please let me know in the comment box you can also reach out to me through my social media channels you can find those details in my youtube banner and channel about us if you like the content i am creating or if you like this video please hit the like icon and if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe the channel please share the video and channel with your friends and to peer thank you so much for watching see you in the next one